Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radacad. In this video, I want to talk about getting data from a SharePoint folder using Power BI, Power Query in Power BI, or using Power Query in uh, Power BI service um, such as Dataflow and Microsoft Fabric Dataflow Gen 2. How does it work? Why do you need that? And uh, some tips of how to get it working. Let's go and check it out. In the previous video, I talked about getting data from a folder. When you have a folder that you have um, similar files, but different data, let's say a few Excel files or CSV file or text files, which have different data um, values, but they have similar data structure. Like for example, you have one uh, CSV file for the budget of uh, financial year 24, another for the budget of financial year 25, and you want to um, combine all of these together. One of the features we have in Power Query is get data from a folder, which is really helpful because uh, behind the scene it creates a function from one of the sample files, then it runs that function for all the files in that folder um, and then combine all of them together. Now you can go and uh, customize that function, the query of that function. You can uh, clean the data so that when the data is combined, it is all clean and ready to use. Uh, now that feature, getting data from a folder, requires you to set up a gateway. I have a separate video about what is the gateway, but uh, basically gateway is a connection from Power BI service when you publish your Power BI uh, desktop file into the service to the, um, to the data source that you have on-prem. For example, this shared folder is in a local folder directory, directory in, um, in a local domain, and that gateway creates the connection. Uh, there are a lot of scenarios that you may not need that gateway. For example, you might have your data in OneDrive for business. And I have a separate video about how to set up that connection so that you don't really need a gateway and you get data from OneDrive for business folder. This video I'm going to talk about when you have data in a SharePoint folder. So let's switch into my screen and I show you what this looks like. So here I have a SharePoint folder. As you can see, this is my SharePoint site. Uh, I have some folders in it, and this folder specifically, this um, sorry, this Fitbit folder. I'm trying to enable zooming application so that you can um, see where the folder is. So this is a folder, and when I go into that folder, I will see something like this, right? So this is my SharePoint folder, and I want to get data from this. When I get data from this, one of the benefits is that I don't need to set up a gateway after I set this in Power BI Desktop. When I publish it to the service, there is no gateway connection required. Everything works just perfectly. Um, you just schedule it to refresh every hour or whatever schedule you want. Now let's go and see how this works inside Power BI. So when I go to Power BI Desktop, when we say get data, um, there are some options to get data from different sources, but when you click on more, then you can go and uh, search either here or you can go to the file section and you'll see SharePoint folder in here. Or you can basically just search for SharePoint. Uh, when you click on the SharePoint folder, here comes the uh, tricky part of it. So here it asks for the site URL, not for the SharePoint folder URL. Although this is get data from SharePoint folder, but the URL asked is the root URL of your website in SharePoint, not the, uh, not the subfolder. You can see it, it tells you in that description. So what happens if I put that SharePoint folder, you see this is the folder URL that I have here. This has this bit for the folder. When I do that, it comes up with an error message that says um, something about this not found or some other information about that. But the reason for this is that this is, uh, this is not the path that this requires. So I, although this is get data from SharePoint folder, you have to specify the root URL. So what I'm going to do is to delete this part. Now you see this, this is the root URL of my SharePoint site. And if I go to my SharePoint site, you see that this is the root URL. So only this bit. Um, once you have that, then you click OK. If it, is, if it is the first time you are connecting to this SharePoint website, it would come up with a window asking you for authenticate, login with your Office 365 account, or whatever account you have, right? So once you have done that, 
Uh, and we are talking about SharePoint Online, of course, in this example, not about SharePoint On-Prem. So once you have done that, once you've passed the authentication, then you will see this. What is this? This is the list of all files in that SharePoint website. And they might belong to all sorts of directories. When I go to the right, you see there is a column here that says folder path. So what you need to do is to filter it for the folder that you want, because in a SharePoint website, you probably have tons of files. Uh, now to do that, before we do the combine, we'll go to the transform data, right? So transform data so that we go to the place that we can transform it before, uh, before processing the combine process. So then I'll go, and this is Power Query Editor window. I have a separate video talking about what is Power Query Editor, so go and check it out. The last folder, the last uh, um, column here is the folder path, and this is the place that you can filter it for a specific folder. So for example, if I want to get data from that FitBuild folder, uh, one of the ways is that I can uh, then copy that path, and when I come here, I just say when it is matching this, right? or you can put text filters such as equals and contains, things like that, because sometimes you might have this in different folders, but all the folders that have, for example, FY in it, because it's financial year, things like that, right? So it doesn't necessarily have to be one folder, it can be even multiple folders. So once you have done that, then, um, then you say, okay, and this will give you only the list of files within that folder. You see the folder is now only that folder for me and the files are only the files within that folder. So that is how you drill down and navigate to the folder. Once you are in the folder, then the rest of the things is simple, right? I'll remove all other columns here because I don't need them. Even the file name or extension, I don't need that. Uh, I'll remove them. This is the column that we normally need, the con content column with the binary content in it. This is the actual file in each of those uh, in uh, each of those files in that folder. So what we need to do is to click on this option, which is combine files. And I have a full video about how the combine file works within a folder. It creates a function from one of the sample files. Then it runs that function for all other files. I'm not going to explain that whole process in here. I'll choose the sample file here. Uh, but you can go and watch that video, uh, which I explained in fully how that custom function behind the scene works and how you can customize it. So once uh, this process is done, you see it created that custom function, it created the parameter for that file and um, a sample query for that file. Then we have the result uh, query in here. And then the rest of the things is simple. And uh, the rest of the things is I can go and uh, remove the columns that I don't need, remove the rows that I don't need. I'll do this part uh, a little bit faster because we have done, I have done that in the other videos So make sure to go and check it out. Uh, so I remove that first row, I remove uh, empty rows as well. And I use first row as header. This would change the structure of the, uh, structure of the file that is why we get an error in that side so I'll remove that last step which is change type and here we have the combined version of all of these I'll use detect data types so that we get all the data types the same so here you see that all the files within that folder are combined this means that if in the future another file gets added to that SharePoint folder we will have it and we can uh, get the output of it uh, in the next refresh of Power BI semantic model without us needing to go and, um, and, and updating it ourselves. So one of the good things about this process is that it is automated. The other good thing about this is that because you are getting it from SharePoint Online, you don't need gateway to set up. Everything works really simply. And uh, the main trick is that don't put the SharePoint folder path at the start. Start with the SharePoint website. But before combining the files, make sure that you go and filter it for the folders that you want. You can also filter it based on other things, not only the folder. You can filter it based on things such as, for example, what was the last date that this file has been created? For example, you want to get only the files that has been uh, updated in the last uh, 12 months or something like that. You can do that. And once you have done that, then you go into the combined files. I explained in details how the combined files in a folder works 
make sure you go and check out the other video. I hope you like this video and if you like this video go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have weekly videos on Power BI and Microsoft Fabric. Until the next video, bye.